Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the DDI AK-47U. Now the AK-47 part's kind of self-explanatory as is the U. If you think about it, it stands for underfolder. This is the underfolding model of DDI's lineup. Now for those of you that are unfamiliar with DDI, who they are, how they got started, basically uh, they purchased Waffenworks equipment. Uh, now let me back up a little bit. Waffenworks uh, used to make AKs for years, primarily 74s, but also some 47s. And uh, initially, their products were really good, got really good reviews. I have one that's really nice and uh, did a positive review as well. Now, towards the end, their quality control really did start to slip a good bit and their reputation went downhill quickly. So DDI purchased all their equipment. Waffenworks no longer is an entity in the AK world. And uh, DDI went right back to upping that quality control where it should be. And uh, it's certainly evident in this rifle. I also have one of their snapped rifles, which we'll see one day down the road. Both rifles are extremely well built and uh, just have a great fit and finish all the way around. Now this particular one is built on a 1950s-ish Bulgarian parts kit. Uh, so you're, you're going to see a lot of Bulgarian parts throughout the review, uh, which is certainly a good thing. Obviously Bulgaria made AK-47s, which were excellent back in the day. Now they're making both AK-47s and AK-47M versions, which are still excellent. So they swapped out, swapped out certain things with some US parts, which we'll get into coming up next in the video. We'll start out up front and work our way to the back. We have a 14 by one threaded muzzle protector on there. Uh, you can use any sort of 14 millimeter muzzle device that you so choose though. It's easily swappable, comes right out and you can just thread it right back on. The front sight, as you can see here from this photo is uh, this gun is zeroed and the front sight is almost dead center. What that indicates is that we have a very straight gun. Now in a lot of uh, imported AKs, that's not always the case in this one here. Uh, DDI does a real good job of doing their uh, quality control during the builds and it's in line the front sight is in line with the gas box which is in line with the rear sight which is in line with the receiver so you certainly can't complain about that at all the barrel itself is a green mountain barrel it's 4140 chrome lined and it does have your standard ak twist pattern so you're going to get very similar uh, sort of uniform accuracy out of this barrel with a wide variety of grain bullets in 7.62 by 39 since it's made from a Bulgarian parts kit, you would certainly expect to see the vented gas tube, and you, we have that here. The handguards here are Bakelite. I do believe they make these with Palmer handguards as well. However, the Bakelite ones, in my opinion, look great, and these are actual surplus ones, so you're going to see perhaps some minor scratching or nicks along the way, which certainly gives it character, but I do like the classic Bakelite look. The receiver is made from one piece of milled 4140 steel. You can see the classic mill lightning cuts here in the receiver. Gives it a good look overall. One thing that you'll note on the receiver, you probably already noticed it throughout the review is that it has an excellent finish on there the finish on this gun is kg gun coat sort of a matte black if you will and it really is nicely applied even all the way around and that gun coat does hold up pretty well and is relatively solvent resistant most solvents out there aren't going to damage it at all if you stick with some clp you'll never have an issue the pistol grip is just black polymer u.s made ak grip standard ak dimensions so nothing too fancy going on there the back of the receiver here is stamped with ddi and it also has that distinct of angle that a lot of the older milled underfolding guns had now disassembly of the rifle is pretty standard stuff uh, you just push in the button here remove your top cover if we can actually do it here on camera again sort of an awkward angle but normally it's not this hard i assure you there we go at this point we're just going to push our spring in pull it out and pull our bolt and bolt carrier group out and that is it. You can take a look inside the receiver there and you'll see it has very nice uh, fit and finish all the way around. No machine marks. Starting to show some wear there, but that's just good, honest use. The fire control group here is the Tapco G2. And uh, it does have a retaining plate in there that's made by DDI. So very easy to take that trigger group out should you choose to do so if you want to do some work on there. Moving forward, you can see that we do have a riveted in bullet guide and uh, sort of in line with, again, the classic milled AKs. You can see that we have this plate here covering up that rivet on the receiver itself. You can see also in there that we do have the chrome wine barrel like we were talking about earlier, which is going to help with uh, barrel life as well as uh, positive extraction, especially when the rifle starts to get foul. The carrier itself is refinished with that KG gun coat as well, and you can see here that these are matching parts kits. So the uh, bolt, bolt carrier group, as well as the uh, top cover all have the same serial number on there.
with any type of AK rifle, reliability is going to be one of the top priorities for most folks looking at it. Now, this one here has just over 500 rounds through it at this point. We had one malfunction. It was actually the second round I ever chambered into the gun. I don't know if it was a break-in issue or what, but it's been 100% reliable ever since. We fired uh, Wolf hollow points, Wolf full metal jacket, some uh, Yugoslavian M67, and a few other rounds through the gun. Now, also, we should cover accuracy, specifically with that green mountain barrel now. This rifle, as you can see, has no optics mount, and throughout the video you haven't seen any optics on the gun, so it's really hard to gauge accuracy for me because a lot of that is going to come down to me, the shooter, uh, and just how well I can use the iron sights. Now, we put the target out at 100 meters, fired some groups, and with the M67 we were getting right around 3.5 inches. That's the best we could do. Again, that's with iron sights and me behind the gun. The barrel and the rifle itself may be capable of more than that, but it's hard to tell with me and my eyes and just how it is uh, in the AK sight radius and all that stuff. So that's the best we could do. You guys may be able to do better out there. Certainly if you throw an Ultimac or something on there and an optic, you'll probably be able to tighten those groups up a little bit, but certainly respectable groups nonetheless with the uh, 762 by 39 round for sure. Cost on this sucker, what does it come to market at? Um, it comes to market generally in the $850 to $900 range. I picked this one up over at AGS Armament, and uh, I believe Atlantic Firearms also sells these rifles, so they're going to be somewhere in that range. And uh, really for what it is, being a milled underfolding rifle with a very good build quality and an excellent warranty behind it, I should note on that note, uh, that uh, DDI has built a reputation for just awesome customer service in the industry. You can check around on the forums and see that they really do take care of their customers really regardless of what the issue may be, should there ever be an issue. Uh, we haven't had one with this rifle, but should you do so, you can certainly uh, buy with confidence in that front. Um, so that's the price it's going to come into and uh, really again for a milled underfolding rifle that's pretty good in my opinion. Now underfolding rifles let's get into that real quick here. I've said in the past that I'm not a huge fan of underfolders. I still still stand by that but they do serve a purpose. Now one thing that's nice about underfolding rifles obviously is that they're a very compact package when they're folded. So a lot of people who like the truck gun concept or want to throw one on an ATV or something like that, it's a very convenient package for that use. Now, the downside of it is that if you're out there shooting for extended periods of time, the actual cheek weld on the rifle isn't all that great, although I should say I prefer the sort of sloped angle of this one over the modern underfolders, which are a little bit more straight. For me, this one is a little bit more comfortable, but ultimately, it's not as comfortable as a fixed stock or even like a polymer folding stock. So... On that note, Echo 93 makes a good product that you guys have probably seen throughout the review. It's a little cheek uh, riser or cheek piece for underfolders. It does help with it. However, it limits the ability to fold it. So sort of pros and cons to both there, if you will. But it's something I'd check out if you're looking at uh, how to make your underfolding rifles a little bit more comfortable. Of course, you can always paracord wrap them as well, which does help a little bit. But it's sort of the nature of the beast with an underfolding rifle. You get a little bit more compactness, concealability, ability to move in and out of vehicles. You lose a little comfort just how it is but all in all very good rifle that's performed well and really the thing that jumps out at me overall of uh since i've purchased it is just the build quality of it fit and finish those things really are excellent in my opinion if you guys have any questions about the rifle that we didn't answer here during the review you can always post below in the comment section you can also post it over at my facebook page as always but thanks for watching guys thanks for subscribing and i hope to see you in the next video